So having seen how to make a bouncing ball, let's um, let's make another simulation. In this case, I think uh, let's do wind blowing sort of a tree. And we're going to do two versions of this here. The first is going to be kind of a really simple one. And then um, we'll also see how to make a much fancier looking tree. Um, so uh, I got, again, I'm set up here. We're going to talk about this branch function in a little bit. I just have it here because uh, we're going to need it in a little bit. Um, and uh, so I want to draw a tree. And I'm basically going to do like a lollipop. It's going to be a stick and a circle. You could, of course, spend a lot more time making your tree look really cool. But let's define some uh, variables for this. So the trunk length is going to be 300. Um, actually, that's, for, that's good for now. Let's go ahead and draw our tree so that we can see it. And um, I'm going to just grab, well, no, let's, let's code this together. So we're going to use push and pop for this. Um, so let's go ahead and add that. This is going to be our simple tree. We're going to draw a fancier one in a sec. So I want to draw it from the bottom center. So I'm actually going to translate all the way down. Uh, so in the center and then all the way down to the bottom. We're going to rotate in a little bit to make our tree move in the wind, um, which is why we're starting from that point. Um, but then we can do a stroke. Let's do nice and dark stroke weight of five. This will be our trunk. And then we'll do a line from zero, zero, which right now is this bottom corner. Um, and then in the x direction, it's going to be zero because we want to draw it straight up. And we're going to go negative trunk length like that. And then for the canopy, we can just draw a circle. So we can say fill 255, little transparency, no stroke, and then a circle at um, zero in the x, negative trunk length in the y, and then its diameter is going to be, let's just use trunk length for that. So now we should see, there we go, this little tree looks nice. Um, obviously, we could experiment with this. Um, we can make it bigger or taller. Let's make it a little taller. Um, and you could play with these other variables. Maybe we want the stroke weight to be bigger. Obviously, lots of stuff that you could do here. But our main, fun our main purpose is not to draw a tree. It's to make the tree blow in the wind. And so um, I think we need then a couple more variables. The first thing that we're going to want to have um, is the wind speed. So this is the force of the wind. Um, and let's start that also at 0. We're going to convert this to an angle um, to have the tree move back and forth. And then there's lots of ways that we could make this um, speed change over time. We could use random, which would work OK, but not really look like what we want it to look like. Um, instead, I think better would be to use Perlin noise, because that's going to give us a much smoother kind of random transition. Um, and so for that, we're going to need uh, a variable called noise position. This is going to be our, our spot within the Perlin noise algorithm. And then um, a wind increment. And this is going to be how quickly we're going to change the Perlin noise value. And we'll see how this works in a sec. Um, really nothing going on in setup up here. And um, let's go ahead then, right after translate, remember uh, rotate happens around the origin, 0, 0. So now our origin is down here at the bottom. So I'm going to say rotate. And I'm going to convert um, the wind speed to radians like this. And of course, we're not going to see any change when we run this because the wind speed is not changing. Um, but now we can add that down here. So for every frame, I'm going to say wind speed is going to be the noise uh, using the noise function at the position. So remember, we it's sort of like a lookup. Like we've got this Perlin noise algorithm, um, and we tell it where in this thing we're going to look. And if every frame, we change that position, and it's going to slowly kind of morph us using Perlin noise. Uh, but Perlin noise is going to give us a value from 0 to 1. Um, so I'm going to multiply that by 30 degrees. So that's going to give us um, a, a rotation angle between 0 and 30 degrees. And then every frame, I also want to then update the noise position. Otherwise, we're not going to see a change. And let's run this. And so now we can see the tree is leaning over in the wind. Um, and it's looking nice. It's not looking too random. Um, the, the motion is really kind of like natural and believable. Um, we could try it with random. Let's see how this looks, because it's going to look really different. Um, and this is also something with your projects to think about is like um, to just try stuff and be really, really picky. What's working the way you want it to? What's looking the way you want it to? If instead, we just added a random value maybe between 0.6, negative 0.6 and 
we would get something that looks like this. This is definitely not feeling realistic. This is like weirdly jerky. It feels random. Whereas Perlin noise just feels much, much more natural. See how smooth it kind of moves. And this is really the beauty of Perlin noise. Cool. Um, let's add one more thing. Let's, or let's change how we're drawing this tree. Of course, you could spend a lot of time really making this look super, super cool. And that would be great. You could add leaves, you could have branches that also are affected by the wind, lots of cool stuff. Um, but what I'd like to draw here is something called a Pythagoras tree. This is a very common, um, it's actually a fractal pattern. Um, so it's got repeating structures that look the same at all different scales. And I've gone ahead and created a function to do this. We're not gonna go into the details of the code here. It's commented. I encourage you to take some, take some time and look at this. Um, the key idea here is that this function is recursive. And we haven't talked a lot about recursion, um, but recursive, recursive function is one that calls itself. It's able to, um, from inside its own code, run um, itself over and over until a certain condition is met. And in this case, it's going to create a branch and then a branch and a smaller branch and a smaller branch and a smaller branch until that size gets so small that it stops, comes back to where it started, and then it's going to continue running. So um, we, I think we need a couple more um, variables for that. We can change the angle of the branch. Again, this would be in degrees. And um, we'll set a min length for the branch and let's make that 10 pixels. Again, play with these numbers, see how they look to you. And then um, to draw our Pythagoras tree, we're gonna do push again, pop. We're gonna translate to the same location like this. And uh, let's make it white with a stroke weight. Let's try five. Uh, so then we're going to draw the trunk first. The trunk is just going to be a straight line. And then from there, it's going to branch. So I'm going to draw a line from 0, 0, negative trunk length, just like before. And then the real magic here is branch. And we send in the trunk length. That's going to be our initial value. And we should see, fingers crossed. Oh, cool. It's a little too big. Let's shrink this down. Awesome. So this is the classic Pythagoras tree. Um, and it's really, I don't know, I think it's so satisfying. It's really cool. It's just this branching structure. Um, we can try changing the branch angle here to be narrower or wider. So this is almost more like, a, I don't know, wildflowers or grass or something. If we make it bigger, it's much broader. Um, and we can also change this minimum length. So if we make it shorter, Maybe we can make our stroke a little thinner too. We can add more and more details. Um, now, eventually it's gonna be too much and your computer's really, really gonna slow down, but this still seems to be working really well. And it's responding to the wind in this way that to me feels really natural and really cool. We can certainly also play with that, um, those variables for Perl and noise. Um, so this is sort of the amount of movement every frame the, the wind gives. We can make it bigger or smaller. And yeah, so um, again, this is just another example of the ways that we can start to combine all the stuff that we've covered so far. Um, in this case, push, pop, rotate, um, Perlin noise, and in, in, you know, in this case, adding an additional idea of this Pythagoras tree, but you could do a lot with the more simple lollipop tree. Um, you could also imagine adding lots of trees. Maybe you make a tree class that then the wind applies to all of them. You could add, um, grass down on the bottom that's also responding to this. You can have clouds that blow by based on the wind, all kinds of cool stuff that's all just driven by, you know, a couple of things and Perlin noise that become really like a believable world that we can inhabit. Um, so you might want to take a minute and just play with this. I think it's really fun. Um, and we'll look at some more examples of simulations.